Welcome back, Bison Nation. Tonight is the first show of this academic school year. My name is Mackenzie Stockwell, and I'll be taking you through campus, local, and national news tonight. Stick with us. Survived Homecoming Week, which was filled with many fun activities, including the homecoming parade and football game, where we won 41 to 24. With school spirit in the air, it comes as great news that NDSU was named the number one college in North Dakota. It was named this by Nietzsche, a college ranking website based on student reviews. Nietzsche also ranked NDSU as the 20th college athletics program in the country. NDSU comes in as number 55 in best colleges with no application fees in America. With that said, campus is looking a little different this year. With the demolition of the beloved spaceship and some questionable holes in the ground, students may be wondering why all the construction? Well, there are many upcoming advancements in NDSU architecture, including the Chali School of Music expansion, which is a 9,700 square foot addition to the existing music building, and the Peltier Complex, which is a state-of-the-art fa facility that supports a wide range of research. Additionally, the Richard Offerdale 65 Engineering Complex, Bali Agricultural Laboratory, and the eSports Lab are all currently under construction. At the university address, President Cook stated, these facilities support our faculty and staff to conduct world-class research and prepare our students to excel in a rapidly changing environment. Speaking of rapidly changing environments, as autumn encroaches, it is important to take advantage of the beautiful weather we've experienced. To make the most of it, spend some time outside this Saturday and join a planned hike at Buffalo River State Park. This hike is hosted by the Women's Health and Wellness Club here at NDSU. This is their first event of the 2024 school year. The club will meet this Saturday, the 28th, at Memorial Union Par parking lot at 9.30 in the morning. They will carpool to Buffalo River State Park, and once the hike concludes, participants will be returned to the Union around 12.30. The autumn atmosphere is overtaking, with fall festivities kicking off this weekend. The 7th Annual Apple Pie Harvest Festival will be taking over the streets of Fargo this weekend. This Saturday, September 28th, from 3 till 8 p.m., games, live music, cider pressing demonstrations, and free cider, along with an apple and pumpkin market, will take the streets. At 8 p.m., the street will shut down to encourage a street dance. On Sunday the 29th, from 11 till 3, the festival will continue with a petting zoo, more than 35 vendors, face painting, bouncy houses, and a pet costume contest. This event is free and open to the public. If you're looking to get in the spirit of spooky season, look no further than Buffalo River Pumpkin Patch. This is not only a place to pick out pumpkins, but also a friendly family and fun event. The patch opened last weekend and will now be open every Saturday and Sunday from 6 till 10. It will stay open until the 27th of October, right in time for Halloween. The presidential election is coming up in just over a month. For many college students, this will be the first election they can vote in. That being said, exercise your right to vote. If you are an eligible resident of North Dakota, you do not need to register and you are already ready to vote. If you are from any other state or territory, you can easily register and get more information on the voting process through vote.gov. Remember to organize a mail-in ballot if you are unable to vote in person. Election day is this November 5th. That's all we've got for Bin News tonight. Stick around for sports with Shania and weather with Henry. Coming up next. All that and more after the break. kid deserves to go hungry, but try as they might, not every family can afford to put food on the table every day. That's why the Great Plains Food Bank and their partner agencies work every day to bring food to our hungry neighbors. Every dollar donated can provide four meals for those in need. Go to greatplainsfoodbank.org and donate today so no kid in North Dakota ever has to go hungry. 
My name is Becky Parker and I'm a news anchor at WDAY TV. I graduated from NDSU in 2010 with a degree in journalism, broadcasting and mass communication technologies. And then I had an emphasis on broadcasting. Principles of broadcast production and advanced broadcast production. Those were favorites because they were the most relevant for career experience. You're calling people for interviews, you're writing an article. It doesn't just feel like an assignment, it's like actually doing it. I was the news director for the first full semester of the Bison Information Network. The bin advisor here was very much invested in me to actually have a career in broadcasting. He helped me get my internship and my first job. The people in NDSU's Department of Communication are really interested and helpful in getting students the connections that they need in order to get a job beyond school. The NDSU Bookstore, where every true fan and alum goes to get their pride on. Gear up with a variety of high-quality t-shirts, sweatshirts, hats, and more. Made by top-of-the-line brands like Under Armour, Nike, and CI Sport to help you show off your Bison pride. The NDSU Bookstore has everything you need in your two favorite colors, green and gold. Good evening, welcome back to another Bison Sports Report. Starting off with football, over 17,000 people watched at the Fargo Dome as Bison football closed off homecoming weekend with the win against the Towson Tigers. The Bison was off to a tremendous start in the first half of the game, taking the lead 24 to three. Going into the second half, the Bison maintained their lead but began to slip a little around the 10 minute mark in the fourth when Townsend scored a 72 yard touchdown, cutting the score down to 31. 24. With just under four and a half minutes left of game play, the green and gold were able to snag another field goal and a final touchdown for the win, sealing the score 41-24. Standout player Sharmar Brown recorded a career high of 126 rushing yards and three touchdowns, making his performance a crucial one for the Bison. And you know we can't speak about leading scorers without mentioning Cam Miller, who passed for 219 yards and a touchdown for NDSU. This is the fourth matchup in history against the Bison and the Tigers, with NDSU taking the victory each and every single time. NDSU plays again this Saturday, commencing com conference play against the Illinois State Cardinals. In other news, six NDSU alum and the 1998 wrestling team were inducted into the Bison Hall of Fame this past Friday. Amongst the inductees, Craig Bowl, who led Bison football to three championships as head coach, Ben Woodside and Brett Winkleman, who are champions with the 2009 men's basketball team, Matt Mann, who led the Bison to an NCC regular season championship in baseball, Shara Smith, a softball outfielder and 1999 NCC champion with NDSU. DeAndre Gallagher also made the list, the Bison's first two-time NCAA champion with women's track and field in weight throwing. And last but not least, the 1998 wrestling team who took home an NCAA Division II national title. The Hall of Fame ceremony was hosted at the Shack in addition to the star class being recognized at halftime during Townsend versus NDSU. Women's soccer took control of their final preseason game with a win against St. Ambrose on September 20th for senior night. Seniors Olivia Lovick, Madeline Great, and Olivia Watson each scored a goal apiece catapulting the Bison to victory. Hannah Arnold and Devin Cavanaugh contributed to the win as well, each scoring a single goal helping the Bison recover from consecutive losses these last few weeks. The ladies will match up against the Omaha Mavericks today for their first in-conference game of the season. Moving on, Bison Volleyball experienced highs and lows at the Arizona Wildcat Classic this past weekend. Friday, NDSU suffered a 3-0 defeat against the Wildcats as they struggled to come out on top during all three sets. However, the Bison quickly turned their fate around on Saturday in a four-frame match against Southern Utah. The Bison trailed by two points as Utah took the first frame 25-23. But for the remainder of sets two, three, and four, the Bison completely shut the Thunderbirds down, closing out the match strong three to one, leading by 10 points in the fourth and final frame. Allie Hensey showed up and showed out with 15 blocks, 
15 kills, four blocks, and one ace for the Bison. Alexis Bowling also put up 12 kills in addition to nine kills, two blocks, and one ace from Bailey Randall. We even see sophomore Lauren Jansen etching her name towards the top of the books once again with nine kills, one block, and two aces. Bison's women volleyball opens up this Saturday, opens up conference play at St. Thomas September 26th. As we enter the last few days of September, these beautiful breezy days are definitely coming to an end. I'm gonna go ahead and turn things over to Henry with our bison weather report so we can know what to expect over the next few days. Hello, Bison Nation. I'm Henry again with your weather report. Uh, today we had a high of 86 and a low of 56 with cloudy skies pretty much all throughout the day. Precipitation was at 0%, humidity at 41%, and winds coming at 22 miles an hour. Pretty fast. Uh, moving to our weekend, as you see our weekend, we're expecting a lot of sunny weather, very reminiscent of summer. Uh, sunny weather, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, was 79, 83, and 84. And then dipping into the lows, we're seeing uh, fall lows with 48, 53, and 59 uh, for our next few days. Next week is a complete contrast to that, where you can see we're not expecting much except the low 60s and low 70s, uh, with uh, not a lot of sun throughout the day, partly cloudy Monday and Wednesday, and Tuesday we're expecting very cloudy for the first day of October, with a low high of 63 and a low of 48, so the fall weather is finally going to be upon us, 71, 44, and then 72 and 47. Moving to our national temperatures, you can see here a lot of the country is still very warm. We're getting off that tail end of summer. And as you can see here up in the Appalachians, uh, New York, Maine, we're seeing a lot of those uh, cooler temperatures. Well, all the way down in Arizona, we're seeing 100, 107, uh, 88 all across the board. And even up here, we're slowly starting to see the temperatures start to cool down, but it's still very hot. Moving to our rain, not a lot of rain across the country, not at least not where we are, so you can thank that for the next few days. Uh, a lot of rain coming along the east coast and from the south into the north with a lot of rain happening mostly in a lot of the, um, sorry, a lot of the states along the Appalachian Mountains region and also a lot in Florida, which brings me to Hurricane uh, Helene, uh, which is expected to make landfall in the next few hours. Uh, as you can see here, it's going to come up through Florida and into the central part, central south of the United States of America within a few hours, bringing rains and storms as it go, uh, comes along. Well, that's all I have for weather today. I hope you have a good weekend and enjoy the summer. Make sure to get out, uh, go to uh, Buffalo State Park and enjoy the pumpkin patch. Uh, I'm going to turn it back to Shania. All right, Henry, thank you so much for the forecast, and thank you, Bison Nation, for tuning in to our first show of the semester. Enjoy the rest of your week.